you should probably expect spoilers. The Sonic the Hedgehog universe is a pretty big one. A series with countless titles means finding lines of continuity to follow for its characters can get pretty messy, especially if some games are later demoted to a non-canon status after a newer game has been released. Characters who once had certain traits or motivational aspects suddenly seem to lose them as the series changes direction with whatever new adventure Sega are throwing out next. So yeah, it's a pretty big universe, but one that can be incredibly unstable at times. Which is why a character like E-102 interests me. He was introduced in a game that is largely considered canon, therefore making his inclusion in the series a legit event. But because of his story's outcome, he had no chance to return to the series later on, thereby making his one and only appearance a complete story free from any alterations. It's very rare for a Sonic character to have something like this. E-102, codename Gamma, was built by Dr. Eggman. As part of the E-Series line of robots, Gamma is trained in combat before being pitted against his older, more advanced brother E-101 Beta. The winner would be the one to serve on board Eggman's flying fortress, the Egg Carrier. Gamma wins the battle and earns his place on the crew, leaving Beta to get brushed off as some kind of sideman. Sometime afterwards, Eggman constructed three more robots in the E-Series, E-103 Delta, E-104 Epsilon and E-105 Zeta. Along with Gamma, Eggman sends all four of them out to find and capture P-Froggy, who is the manager for the notorious C-A-T, Biggie Paws. I'm a bad boy! Gamma is sent to Station Square, where after bashing one out on the street corner for 10 minutes, proceeds to bring the thunder to paradise by blowing everything up. Gamma finds Froggy and is then randomly sent to the past by Tikal, for no real reason other than to make us listen to uninterrupted chow singing. Gamma reappears back on the egg carrier where Eggman is getting mad pissed that none of his squad brought the correct frog back. Until he notices Gamma brought the correct frog back. Displeased with the other robots, Eggman banishes them from his ship while Gamma watches on, no doubt leaving a bad taste in his mouth. If he had one. Things only go from bad to Texas Chainsaw Massacre levels when shortly afterwards, Gamma incorrectly enters a room that he wasn't meant to go into. In there he finds his older brother E-101 Beta getting stripped down into individual parts and being rebuilt like some kind of Umbrella Corporation experiment. <laughs> Later, when Gamma goes to retrieve the Flicky Bird from Amy Rose, who is being held prisoner aboard the Egg Carrier, something clicks within him and he ends up freeing the pair of them from their cell. Then, after a short fight with Sonic, Gamma escapes from the Egg Carrier as it crashes out of the sky, leaving him to have some alone time and question everything that had happened within the last few hours. He comes to the conclusion that Eggman is now his enemy and no longer wishes to follow his orders. Gamma deletes his registry files and begins to act on his own, vowing to save his abandoned robot brethren that Eggman had banished earlier. And by saving them, I mean he's out to destroy the robotic shells that his bros are encased in so that the animal inside can be freed. Gamma's journey reaches conclusion when he faces his older brother E-101 Beta, who has now been rebuilt in his Mark II body. The slugfest between them reaches climax when they both effectively destroy each other, bringing Gamma's entire short story to a bittersweet end. The Sonic series has never attempted to retcon or change the outcome of this story, meaning the robot known as E-102 died and has stayed dead since Sonic Adventure 1. Visual Design Gamma's design was a strange one to behold upon his initial release. I remember back then I had a phone conversation with one of my cousins who had seen the characters for Sonic Adventure before I did. When he told me that one of the playable characters was a robot, I became incredibly intrigued. Up until that point, 90% of the robots in the Sonic series had been modelled after something, whether it be an animal or some kind of object. My question to my cousin was, what animal was the robot based on? And I remember feeling disappointed when his response was, oh, it doesn't look like any animal, it just looks like a robot. 
The Sonic series had been so creative with its badnik designs, to me each enemy had identifiable characteristics based on whatever it was referencing, so when I first saw Gamma, I was underwhelmed. It really didn't do anything for me at all and dare I say it, it felt like somewhat of a step backwards. This personal opinion did kinda change over time though, as I continued to follow the series and saw how lacklustre some of the later robot designs became, looking back on Gamma now, I kinda feel his design wasn't as bad as I originally thought it to be. While it might not take any sort of inspiration from anything, aside from perhaps a vehicle with a single headlight and metallic mud flap, Gamma's design holds a certain level of character about it. It feels newborn, unrefined even. I suppose some of its cues come from an egg robo if anything, but overall it feels like Sonic Team wanted to try their hand at something else, something that will distinguish Gamma from an ordinary badnik robot, and to that degree I can respect his design. If it's any consolation, as far as every other robot in the E series goes, Gamma probably has my favourite design of the lot, and it's a damn sight better than any of his concept designs. Gamma has a sleek red paint job that is broken up neatly in the middle by a white stripe, while several instances of amber on his arms and legs help to even out the placements of colour. The rest of the colours on him are made of varying degrees of metal tones, such as a lighter silver for his limbs and darker grey for his gun. In general, it gets the robotic feel across neatly enough while offering some elements of personal flair thanks to this paint job. I like the fact that flicky birds were used to power Gamma and Beta specifically. The flicky seems to be the most reoccurring type of creature within the Sonic series, kinda like what the chocobo is to Final Fantasy I suppose. I'm also pretty fond of Gamma having a gun for an arm, as cliched as gun arms can be. Hmm, having a gun for a right arm? And the inclusion of a little bird that ultimately affects the robot's original line of programming? Bastion, you son of a bitch! Personality. The trick here with Gamma is that he's a robot who is meant to lack any personality while subconsciously trying to find his lost inner personality. For the obedient machine, Gamma delivers each line of dialogue with a loyal robotic tone that lacks any soul, but when Gamma goes through the phases of questioning Eggman and even himself, the voice seems to be sprinkled with slight hints of emotion as the flicky within him very briefly breaks through the programming. I'd imagine voicing a character like this can be a difficult balancing act. On one hand, you're acting as a robot, while on the other hand, you have to remember that there's something within this robot that identifies with emotion. I'm no voice actor so I can't really call it, but I have to say that the late Steve Brody who voiced Gamma did a pretty amazing job within these specifications. No data found. Location unknown. This presents a problem. In character, Gamma's lines are not too heavy, with each sentence being to the point. During the moments where Gamma has trouble understanding something, he will pause briefly, almost like his inner computer is trying to access the correct file that would explain the situation to him. Although the questions ended up causing him to eventually leave Eggman, Gamma didn't suddenly gain greater access to more emotions from doing so. Instead, he retained his robotic nature and continued to question everything right up until his demise. This is interesting for the simple fact that it allowed the story to continue to be told from the perspective of the robot, not the flicky inside it. Gamma maintains a sense of character, and his story never loses its centre of focus. Importance. It is pretty commendable what Gamma was able to achieve within such a short story. Firstly, he was built by Eggman, and unlike other robots that failed his expectations, Gamma was considered to be a more successful creation. Until he turned on him of course, but that's besides the point. And what's actually interesting about that though, is Gamma never directly attacked Eggman himself during the entirety of his rebellion. While Gamma identified Eggman as the new enemy, his objectives were to find and destroy all robots in the E series, not to go off and attack Eggman. This showed us Gamma had an order of priority and what was more important to him. Then there's Amy Rose, and the flicky that she travelled with. While the Flicky was the visual cue responsible for sparking the flame that would ignite Gamma's rebellion, Amy herself was the first character to ask Gamma questions that he could not answer, and in turn it caused him to ask some questions of his own. As I mentioned in my Amy Rose episode, one of Amy's most defining traits is her finding the positive qualities within you and latching onto it. When she realised Gamma had more going on with him than what was presented on the surface, she offered to be his friend. This gesture of forming a bond with another character left a lasting impression on Gamma. 
When they meet for a second time during Gamma's fight with Sonic, it's Amy who steps in to break it up, telling them not to fight each other, otherwise it's more than likely Gamma would have been destroyed right then and there. These acts of kindness from Amy were the catalysts that pulled Gamma out from his confinement as an Eggman slave and sent him down his own path with his own choices. Obviously, the one and only choice he made was to save his robot brothers. In turn, this led him to a second and final confrontation with his older brother Beta. It's Gamma's history with Beta that probably served as the strongest visual memory of why the E series needed to be shut down. Think back to when Gamma accidentally walked in on seeing Beta being rebuilt. Think about the way in which that scene played out. It takes cues from a horror movie. It is specifically presented that way to make us understand that what Gamma is seeing is true horror to him. You hear the initial sounds of saws and drills working away. You see Beta's old part sprawled out on the floor like dismembered limbs in a slaughterhouse. Gamma even questions if it is his brother and slowly steps back in horror when he realises what he's looking at. Beta. The E series is a horror in itself and is a horrible tormenting experience for the animals trapped inside. After seeing what had become of Beta, it's no wonder Gamma made it his one and only objective to destroy that entire line of robots. The final battle with Beta is probably the most iconic moment from Gamma's entire storyline, partly due to what it delivers and the way it delivers it. When Gamma stops to count the remaining robots left, does he realise, aside from his older brother Beta, Gamma himself is part of the same series that he's trying to destroy, therefore he recognises the logic in eventually destroying himself. Beta and Gamma have their final showdown in which Gamma wins, leaving Beta trashed and malfunctioning. Gamma slowly approaches him, seemingly displaying some forms of concern to Beta's condition, though Beta fires a shot at point blank range on Gamma, damaging him severely. Beta's own damage takes its toll and he explodes, freeing the Flicky Bird that was trapped inside. As Gamma limps away from the scene, he is stopped by the Flicky, who more than likely wanted to show some gratitude for being freed. A memory begins to glitch through Gamma's programming, and it's then he suddenly realises who he himself originally was before being turned into a robot. He too was a Flicky, one that belonged to the same group of the one he'd just freed. As a last final action, Gamma activates his self-destruct mode before his damages could prevent him from doing so, freeing the Flicky that was powering him and allowing the bird to return to its flock. The scene is beautiful. The whole final encounter was probably the strongest form of storytelling presented to us within the whole game. From the moment Gamma realises who his last two targets are, not a word is spoken. There's a grim realisation of what must be done and no more questions need asking. He faces Beta head on knowing that his brother was more powerful than ever. The pair of them literally destroy each other in the process and as a final attempt to make things right, Gamma takes his own life to free the life inside of him. There is no dialogue. This was a moment in the game where the actions needed to speak louder than words. Even the music had stopped to allow the visuals to do their thing unaided with only the sound of the ocean to accompany the backdrop. This is my most memorable moment from all of Sonic Adventure just for the sheer level of effort they put into presenting Gamma's ending as effectively as they could. It truly was an unforgettable arc for a character who had such little time to do it all in. To the Sonic universe internally, he may not have added much. Could the Sonic Adventure storyline have existed without Gamma? Yes, absolutely. Amy Rose was the only prominent character he affected, and in actuality, she technically affected his life, not the other way around. But to the Sonic universe externally, for us looking in from a third person's perspective, Gamma is one of the rare few characters to have the most refined story. A story that follows a character who morally questions his own existence and wonders if the actions he's being ordered to carry out are justified. Where does one draw the line between following what you're told is right and following what you feel is right? And furthermore, being content with oneself. To free your inner self by no longer questioning everything about your existence because you have come to understand who you truly are. You wanna talk about symbolism, bruv? Cause Gamma's got that shit. Conclusion. Gamma tends to be forgotten a lot because he only had one single appearance. When stacked up against the longer standing characters in this series, it's a difficult job trying to stay in the limelight. But maybe Gamma doesn't need fans, and perhaps he doesn't need to be portrayed as a star either. The one thing that he does need to be recognised for though is just how complete he is. 
Gamma gives the Sonic universe a slice of solidity. For every popular character in this series that gets changed and altered, Gamma and his story will continue to remain intact.